Okay, so hi and a uh, welcome to this video. As you can see, I've got a uh, graphics card in front of me. And uh, what I'm actually going to do today is I was asked by a friend on how the hell do I clean my graphics cards and uh, reapply thermal paste to them because he is absolutely afraid of opening up this graphics card uh, for in fear of fucking things up or you know screwing things up for forgive my language um, so obviously I have my graphics card just pulled from my computer and you can tell it's dirty as hell I've got fucking dust in here and shit like that um, let's turn it around and as you can tell I've got plenty of dust here but the one thing we obviously want to focus on here these for screws. Now bear in mind that doing this you will obviously void your warranty so you know keep that in mind I'm not responsible ultimately if whatever whatever happens to your card um, and obviously the first thing you need to do for this is you'd need a graphics card there you'd need a screwdriver to prop things open as I've got one here and you need a good thermal compound if obviously if you plan to replace your the thermal compound sorry thermal compound on your graphics card so what I have in front of me here is the Zygmatech let's see if you can see that a Zygmatech PTI G3606 thermal compound and uh, this is what I'll be using today to replace this so without ado let's get to cracking this guy open and then after I get it open I will show you how I take it off obviously I will cut the video clean up my card and then I'll get back to applying and uh, cleaning and then applying reapplying it's not as difficult as it looks it's actually a pretty easy task but some people are afraid of it and I do not blame them entirely Obviously keep your screws handy, um, keep them away, keep them safe, do not lose them, because if you do, you're probably screwed. So now that the screws are off, I can slowly lift the cart, and I can slowly pry this one off. Though it seems that there are additional screws for this guy, and I should really remove them as well. Um, Notably, there is a screw here, which I should prop off, and I will do so right now. Just put that in there. You can see there's a screw here, and there's a screw there. So I'll be taking these off as well. Now be gentle, obviously, when you're doing this. Electronics aren't meant to be uh, treated roughly with, and that's how you get them to last longer anyway. By being gentle and kind with them. As you can tell, the uh, card opens off very nicely. And don't be too hasty with this one because, as you've noticed, I've not even taken out the uh, pin yet. So, once that's off, I'm going to lift this up with these pair of pliers. These guys are tough. Just get that, get the latches off, and we're good to go. If I can get the latches off, and this guy's tough in there. I'm pretty sure there's nothing else holding him down, but he's giving me a hard time. There we go. All right, so that's the uh, cooling guy off, and. Technically, you can wash any part of this with water, but I generally only wash the uh, heat sink, this guy, with water. I don't really wash anything else with water. The rest, I just give it a good wipe down, and uh, I'm good to go. So I will come back when I give these guys a good blowdown with my water hose. Okay, so, <clears throat> sorry. I am back and I've done a additional cleaning on my graphics card as you can see. 
Uh, how I cleaned it is I used a wet cloth and uh, something like this, sorry, like this that you will probably commonly get um, when you're buying a DSLR. They will give you um, some of these pumps and they're really good at getting dust out of there. And that's always a good thing. So, as I mentioned, I only use a uh, wet cloth to sort of like roughly go through things and uh, make sure they're fine. I'm sorry, not wet, um, sort of damp. You know, you don't want it to be too wet. I. Uh, yeah, and um, how I'm going to clean this is I've got a bit of thinner. I would actually use ethanol. And uh, ethanol is actually a bit easier to find in some places. But for me, the best option I've got is thinner. So I'm going to take a bit of this thinner. I'm going to use a bit of a uh, cotton swab. Soak it a little bit. Side to side, and uh, using this damp sort of cotton swab, I'm going to go over this. And you can tell that the uh, thermal compound comes off easily, but uh, it gets a bit messy. So uh, that's where you gotta sort of get in there and clean it all up. If you've got more than uh, cotton bud, uh, cotton sort of swabs. I don't think these are cotton swabs. These are cotton pads or something. You'd probably want to use those as well as they're getting cleaner and uh, deeper and uh, you can tell it's a bit dirty right now I'm just going to change this uh, there's no point in using one that's really dirty because it's just going to elevate the problem of getting it nice and clean so usually my second step from here is to get the remaining bits out with this cotton swab Clean that all out. Nice and shiny NVIDIA logo. And that's always good. Alright, that looks great. And it's ready to be reapplied back on again. But before we do that, I'm going to go around and uh, bring my coolers into the fray as well. So let's push that off screen. And you can tell that I gave my cooler a bit of a beat down when it came to water pumping. And uh, as far as I can see anyway, it's still a bit damp. And that's fine. I'm not going to completely put it in just yet. It's just for cleaning purposes. And I'm going to flip it across. And you can tell I've got the uh, compound here. The sides are a bit overflowing, so I'm going to see if I can clean that up before I do a overall sweep. And that will save me a lot of headache of doing additional cleans later. That looks great. Okay. Just use the other side to see if I can finish this up. Really stamping it a little bit. Alright, it looks alright. And back to these cotton thingies. Just give it a good clean and it should be ready to go. You probably don't want to get this on like any of the uh, graphics card up front because thinner and uh, plastic, we all know, they don't go very well together. So always bear that in mind and always be careful with what you're doing. After all, you're dealing with a computer over here. Do not take it lightly. Just gonna do this thermal compounds here. These are actually thermal strips. If I know the name, just give a bit of a light wipe down cleaning to get rid of all of these bits and that should help in its conductivity a bit later 
bear in mind um, don't get any of these cotton bits stuck in there this will probably cause you a bit of a headache later okay so that looks about great with that cleaned up the next step is obviously reapplying the uh, thermal compound and uh, I'll get back to you in that well, I'll continue it a bit later see ya okay so I am back and uh, I just ran through my graphics card with a uh, heat gun on very low heat, heat settings just to make sure that the uh, board is thoroughly dry and clean uh, and here comes the fun part application so um, most of the time when you buy these thermal compounds they'll give you a uh, sort of mini spatula now a lot of people they don't really go through this step but I I'm a bit pedantic in that sense that I like to get it nice and uh, you know going so generally when I apply I make sure that I spread it out evenly so let me just get this going yeah okay so that looks like enough for now um, I'll add more as I go where the hell's my cat oh there it is light dab obviously and then so some thermal compounds are actually a lot easier to apply than others and this is actually the most liquid thermal compound I've ever used and uh, means that it's actually very easy to apply the previous thermal compound that I used before was the Gaylid um, or Gaylid whatever GC Extreme and uh, that was slightly more difficult to apply kind of tough on the tough side but uh, I hear that this thermal compound is as good as Arctic Silver 5 if uh, hardware secrets is anything to go by and we'll just get a good coating here and that looks I'm actually a bit happy with that right now so got a bit left on my thing but I'll make it slightly thicker ever so slightly so just dab a little bit more on there and we're good to go just evenly spread this out ah bugger And you obviously don't have to be perfect, but uh, the way I see it, the perfection gives me the peace of mind. Mm. That is sort of it. As you can tell, it's uh, not too thick. Um, you can't really see the base anymore. And that's the way I've usually done it. And... Uh, well, through my technique, I've managed to get the temperatures down to a good... I mean, I did this for my uh, liquid cooling system and it brought it down from 98. Don't ask me how. It got up to 98 in the first application. That was with their default um, compound. And I actually switched the compound out into my own and uh, I dropped it down to 77 tops and I'm trying to figure if I'm putting it in the right, right way right now but pretty sure I am pretty sure yeah yeah I'm pretty sure I am so this is the way I do it anyway I hook it in first obviously you can tell I hook it um, the fan connector back into the board and I flip it over and just move move this up so it's easier for you guys to see and while sort of slowly placing it down trying to see if you can guide yourself back into the holes oops that was not intended okay. like so 
and now I get the screws and I put the way I do it I put opposite corners in first but don't screw them in tightly until you get the other side in okay that's one That's tight in, and that's tight in. Let's get this one in. And you can tell it's a uh, relatively easy process. It's not overly difficult. So as long as you're careful. You follow the basic rules. For example, don't you don't get your board wet and plug it in. I mean, it's fine if you clean your board in uh, water, actually, as long as you make sure that it is completely dry after that, and don't really do air drying because air drying tends to leave leave a lot of minerals left behind on the uh, board itself. That can, and I say can conduct electricity which is not a good thing so there it is with all the screws in and the thermal paste reapplied it's time to hook it back into the system now that it's completely cleaned off and uh, watch the temperatures as they miraculously get better cheers thanks for watching